Welcome to another tutorial from P8 Studios. This is part of the advanced training or advanced techniques series. And what we will cover in this tutorial is advanced movement, which is simply adding time to our current movement tutorials and solutions. So before we dive into the code, let me explain what this time component does. I'm going to explain some physics and math here, so I will edit the video and add some diagrams for you to see so you're not listening to me with having no idea what's going on and I might say something too fast or something, but you'll see a diagram and it'll explain something just as I'm talking about it here. So, in physics, an object has velocity, which means it travels some distance over a period of time. Now, the distance can be meters, feet, yards, whatever type of measurement you want. And the time can be seconds, minutes, hours, whatever type of measurement you want. But it needs to be consistent for your project or your uh, little physics problem or even the game problem. So now acceleration is a bit is a lot similar but it's a bit different. It is an object has acceleration when it moves a certain distance over a period of time over a period of time. Or simplified it's distance over time squared. So I'll use the most common thing, it meters for distance and seconds for time. So velocity will be meters per second and acceleration will be meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Now, every tutorial so far, including the complete game tutorial and the basic training series, we have done simply vector addition to achieve updating for position and updating for acceleration which means what you saw position plus equals velocity and velocity plus equals acceleration is just vector addition and it will achieve a simple little velocity and acceleration effect to our game objects now the advantage of that is it's very simple to do it's very useful for small projects and it just simply increases a lot faster than the time component does. You can have a smaller value and it will be faster than a larger value the new way. So let's discuss the new way. We add a time component in which means we need to make the units equal position is just pixels and velocity is pixels per second this is what we want for every tutorial before we've had pixels per game loop we updated the pixels every time our game looped so it's a lot faster velocity and a lot faster acceleration when we have a lower amount we want to change that to where the units are pixels per second, which means every second our object will travel a certain amount of pixels. So we want to get the units equal. Since position is just pixels and velocity is pixels per second, we need to multiply by second to get rid of that second so it's pixels plus pixels and there we go and you'll see the formula in the diagram when I've edited the video of what's going on here acceleration is a bit the same velocity plus equals acceleration we want to add the time component in and make the units equal velocity is just meters per second acceleration is meters per second squared so we just multiply acceleration times time, it will get rid of one of the seconds, so the units will be equal. So we need to do that on our game. And what this does, it achieves a nice smooth effect 
if your computer or game slows down during the your playing time, it'll kind of correct it a more better way than the other way that we did things. If we just did position plus equals velocity, and your computer or game slowed down, you'll get sort of jumping effects. If we do it the new way, which is add the time component, the time will be shorter because the game is running slower, and therefore the position will just update a little bit less than when it usually updates. You will get slower movements, but you won't get jumpy objects, usually, unless your computer or game really slows down and things are going to be jumpy no matter what you do. So now let's go into the coding. And I'm only going to do velocity. I'm not going to do acceleration because there's one part of the coding where I need to change drastically in order to get the velocity working, but it's basically the same thing. So on the main website, phstudios.com, we go to the XNA basic training and we view the series here. Let's get the movement to part one, download that project file, save it. And then extract it. And then we simply run our game. And this is completed code for the movement one tutorial where it's just I'm um, just bouncing off the walls with a certain velocity. If we go into game one dot cs our all of our code is here. Let's just simply add the time component. Now you can use a time component you want. You can just have a constant up here for time if you want. Or you can use the provided game time which will provide a nice smooth movement for you to use. And you can also use a combination of this. You can use a constant time component and a game time to achieve your desired result. So let's use the game time and let's go where, we're, where we update the position. Let's comment that out because that's old. Let's do it the new way. Position plus equals the formula as I mentioned is just velocity times time. And an easy way to do this is to just do vector 2 dot multiply. You multiply a vector by a float scale vector it takes vector and a scale vector which is a float. So we need to multiply the velocity and the time components will be game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds. We want to update the position for a certain amount of seconds. You can use milliseconds or something if you want but I like using seconds since it's the most common one. And there we go. Now if we press F5, oh, we need to float, so we need to cast this. So now if we press F5, as you can see our object is moving a lot slower, but it is a lot smoother than before. And that's because we have a velocity, a certain amount, we normalize it, we multiply it by 10, and then we multiply it by time. Now, XNA likes to keep the game around 60 frames per second, which means it updates 60 times per one second. Now you can see what's going on with the other way where a lower value of velocity increases the position a lot quicker. Because every game loop, you're updating the position by, let's say, 20. So game loop 1, 